Let's start lesson four, using vectors, applications. And I wrote here, the famous river question, a classic vector question is either an airplane with a crosswind or a boat on a river, because mathematically they're identical. An observer is standing on the shore of a river. He sees a boat traveling across the river when the boat's engine is pointing the boat directly across the river. You know what, that's gonna be important. I would underline that. The current is pushing the boat sideways. The boat's velocity with respect to the shore is eight meters per second at an angle of 65 degrees with the shore. Huh? Well, I wrote here DALP. What does DALP stand for? Bravo. We're gonna draw a little picture and looking at the spacing, I mean, I could draw the river this way, that'd be dumb because I got lots of space. I'm gonna draw the river nice and big. Like that. River. You can add waves, but that's just going to take up room, so you don't need to. Um, I'm going to draw the boat. Which way is the boat pointing? So I'm going to have the boat go up, because I just kind of think better that way. And I'm going to draw the boat dee -dee 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 -dee, uh, like this, pointing up the river, not pointing sideways or anything like that. It says the engine is pointing straight across. And just so that we're in familiar territory, Jake, let's have the current going this way, not that way, because that's kind of positive. We think that way. So I'm going to say uh, here is the current. And I'm going to argue here, Robbie, that the Boat plus the current is the com combination. That's how the boat actually moves. The engine plus the current. And in other words, as a picture, as a picture, I'm going to draw this, and I'm going to call this V engine. Adding tip to tail, here is V, and I'll call that C for current. And here is the resultant velocity. What else did they tell me? Oh, they told me the boat's velocity with respect to the shore. How big? at an angle of, with the, okay. So I think this is the eight, not the engine, because they told me with respect to the shore. That's the eight. Now, the 65 degrees would go there. Problem, that's not in my triangle. But that is with respect to the shore. That's why I put it there. There's another triangle. Now, there's a couple of ways you can do this. You can say, hey, that's a right angle, and so that little one next to it is 90 minus 65, 35. I usually try and figure out where the angle that they gave me might fit in the triangle. We don't do geometry in high school anymore, but this is a very, very handy one. If you ever notice that there is a Z, if you're American, a Z, a Z, proud Canadian, it turns out that this angle and this angle are the same. We call these alternate interior angles. Have you guys seen that one before? I don't think there's, is there geometry in pre-calc? There is? Okay. That's going to come in handy, believe me. So uh, this is 65 degrees. All right. Isaac, what's part A want me to find? How fast is the current? Which of those three is the current? V eng, VC, or V? VC. You know what? I have a lovely triangle. And here's the nice thing. Hey, it is a right triangle. Let's label the sides. That eight, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse. 
I think the eight's the hypotenuse. Yes? Uh, Isaac, that VC opposite or adjacent, my friend? I agree. That V eng opposite. How fast is the current? You said it was VC. By the way, this time I know the eight. Which trig function am I going to use here? Not tangent for a change. Which one? Cos. I haven't used that one all that much. But the reason is, by the way, this time they gave me the hypotenuse. So cos, what always goes next to the trig function? The angle. And that's going to be the current over 8. Oh, Mr. Dewitt, this is one fraction equals one fraction again. Yes, it is, Tice. So does that mean the 8 can just move to the front on the other side? Why, yes, it can. In fact, we can say VC is going to be 8 times the cos. What is the current of this river? Three point three eight. That's to three sig figs. Units, meters per second. Direction. You know what? You could say east if you put a compass rose on there. But I really, I said how fast. I didn't specifically say give me a direction. And it's in the picture. I'm, whatever. We're good. Jake, what's B asking me to find? In my little picture, which of the V's do you think we're trying to find now? Yeah. I think so, because I already know the other one's eight. That would be boring. And across the river, it seems to me, suggests that way. So which vector lines up with that way? Say it again loud and proud. Yeah. The engine velocity. Which, by the way, you know what? These are both going to be the same answer. I did this on purpose. How fast is the boat moving across the river? What's the engine speed? They're going to be the same because the movement across the river comes from the engine. The movement down the river comes from the current. The combined velocities, that's your resultant. Um, hey, Jake, which trig function could I use to find engine? Sin is when you swear in my class. Sin is when you call it sin. When you call sign sin, that's a sin sign. Yes? Now, by the way, you said tan. You could, since we now know this, the only risk I'm doing if I use tangent is if I got this wrong, I'm getting this wrong. So I'll use sign because it uses data they gave me and it's no extra work. What always goes next to the trig function? The angle. And it's going to be opposite over hypotenuse. Now, by the way, again, if you're a little shaky on the trig, you could certainly go somewhere at the top of the page. It is on your formula sheet uh, somewhere, written a little bit differently. I don't think they have Sokotoa. I think they have it in terms of uh, an A, a B, and a C. Or, I don't know, something like that. Jake, is this one fraction equals one fraction? Oh, you don't say. So I think if I hear you, you're saying the engine speed is going to be 8 Sign 65. Jake, have you heeded my advice to get a good calculator? Because if you have, you should be able to just backspace and change the cos to a sign and not have to retype everything else. Just saying. Oh, yeah, every day. Every day. Question? Did Jose get a new calculator yet? Units, Jake? Um. Yeah. What is the plane's engine speed? Uh, sorry, the, uh, what is the boat's engine speed? Same answer. It's that. Ah, Tyler, can you read part C to me, please? If the river is 256 meters wide, how long does it take to get across the river? What's this asking me to find? I think the length is 256. Oh, yeah. 
And uh, no, I'm glad you did that because I have told you how long is a vague because it can mean time and it can mean like you'll have to interpret it. Although if I give it to you on a test, I'll make sure it's pretty obvious. Although I would argue here it's a little obvious because they wouldn't ask me to find the 256 and they gave me the 256. Um, so I'm going to write down. Uh, and you know what? I'm going to go label this on the diagram because I want to show you by far the most common mistake. If the river is 256 meters, what word? Wide. wide. I'm going to argue that 256 goes there. Draw that in for a reason. Because if there is one thing that I want you to remember with vectors, if there is one common mistake that kids make, which drives me crazy, if there is one thing I want you to remember with vectors, it's this. The directions have to be the same for any variables that you use. Show you what I mean. See this direction? Hang on, let me pause the video. So here's my argument. Put your pencils down and just watch. First of all, if I'm going to give you a vector question in physics 12 here, you can assume this. You can assume that. You can write that down later. I'm going to come back to this, but I just want you to watch the argument. In fact, I think what I'm going to use as an equation, just watch, is this. Except what's the acceleration? And you know what? If you're not accelerating, I'm even going to say your V initial is your V final. Is in fact, this is the one that you started off with back in science 10, the boring one. Okay. The triangle one. Um, get the T by itself, because that's what we're being asked to find. Ty Tyler, you can do this one. How would I get the T by itself? So you're saying this. Kids always get to here, but let me show you the most common mistake they make. They go like this. Don't write this down. Wait a minute. Here's the 256 on my diagram. Ah, I love it. Tice back there went, what are you doing? You can't put a slanty into a vertical. And you guys laugh, but when we look at projectiles next unit, by far, far the most common mistake kids put a vertical value into a horizontal equation and it drives me crazy and I haven't yet found a way to beat it out of you but I'm working on it okay so which velocity will I use if we're in vectors next this is important Mac because in physics 11 you could really be sloppy because everything just did this the worst mistake you would make is forgetting a negative and you usually catch that because your answer looked funny here, we're going to have the ability to do it totally wrong and not know. If I've drawn my, uh, my distance as vertical, in fact, you know what? Pick your pencils up. Let's call this dy, vertical. I have to use a vy. Which v am I going to use here? Not the 8. 7.25. In fact, now, pick your pencils up. You can write this down. But we're going to add some stuff. I'm going to put a little Y next to the D and a little Y next to the V just to remind myself I better be using the same directions in an equation. Otherwise, that's a sin. An evil one for which there is no forgiveness. So, hopefully you didn't write the 8, because the 8's wrong. Uh, you got two options. You could put 7.25, or Quint, if you really want to be fussy and accurate, you could go uh, 8 sine 65. But you know what? I'm going to put 7.25, because I'm pretty sure my last answer still stored on my calculator is, uh, oh yeah, I've got it to, like, 10 decimal places. So on my calculator, I'm going to go 256 divided by, haha, answer button. If you have a good calculator, you probably get a way of doing that. 35.3 uh, what? Seconds. I 
I find for the river question, it's a little more obvious with the directions. But next lesson, when we start looking at projectile motion, it's not so obvious. D. D. Devin, what's D asking me to find? How far down the bank will the boat have moved when it reaches the side? You know what? I think if I look at my picture, I think, I think, I think what we're really talking about is, I'll call it dx, a horizontal distance. We're again, for you guys this year, if I give you a vector question, we're going to assume the acceleration is there. By the way, we could handle an acceleration. That's just overkill, Kate. I'm not going to throw that at you. So for the river question or for the airplane question, you can assume all the speeds are constant, which means, Devin, I can just do this. D equals VT. No, 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 no. X, X, just to remind myself. Which V am I going to use from my picture? Not the 8. 3.38? Time. Oh. Oh! Wait a minute. I would argue the time it takes you to go across is exactly the same amount of time that you're drifting downstream. So I think I can use the 35.3. In fact, I'm going to use the answer button on my calculator. In fact, if you really, really wanted to be uber accurate, you could go uh, recalculate the coast thing that we did in part A and then times your answer, but whatever. You know what? Three sig figs, this is going to be fine. 3.38 times answer button. 119 meters downstream. No yawning, Victoria. Wake up. <coughs> Suppose, instead of ending up 119 meters downstream, you want to end up straight across on the other side. I think what you'll have to do is you'll have to point your boat into the current. At what angle? At what angle? You know what? I think we should, no, it's not 65 degrees. Nice try. We're going to dull patience. We're going to draw a little picture. Which way are we going to point the boat? This way, as a picture. And then I want to add to that the current. Lewis, if I want to add the current, how would I add the current to this? Draw it. So look, put your pencils down and watch. When I draw the current, I know I don't want to draw it that long. And I know I don't want to draw it that short because I know what the resultant looks like. The resultant has to look straight across. In other words, I'm going to draw the current in. Draw, 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 draw. Stop right there. Here's the current. Here's the resultant. What's this one? Lewis. Uh, L yeah. Not Lewis. Oh. Leonard. Danke. The engine. Engine. Which I think we figured out in part B. And we're going to make another assumption. We're going to make, uh, we're going to just, and this is where I have to go into my magic physics world. Uh, we're going to assume the boat guy just keeps it at a steady speed and doesn't, doesn't change the throttle. OK. All right. How can I find, first of all, a number of you, uh, oh, it, it wants the direction. It wants the direction. I think the direction is going to be that angle there, because that's with respect to the shore. Problem. That angle's not in my triangle. But wait a minute. Zorro comes to the rescue again. There is a Z, which means that angle and this angle are the same. If that's the angle, what's VR, opposite, adjacent, or hypotenuse? What's VC, adjacent, or hypotenuse? 
What's V E? Let me make that a better E because it looks kind of like a C. What's V engine? Which trig function could I use to find theta? Well, I don't know VR, the resultant. Do I know the current? Three point whatever. Do I know the engine? Seven point. Wh oh, and this is why last day I said, Mr. Duick, is it tangent all the time? And I said, often. But not always. Because which trig function this time? OK. Cos theta equals adjacent over hypotenuse. This one is tough enough that I even wrote it out before plugging numbers in. Cos theta is going to be, what was VC? 3.3 what? 3.38? Is that it? Yeah. You guys have it on the same page. I don't. Uh, seven, uh, seven? Yeah, 7.25. And then to find an angle, I'm going to hit inverse cos of that on my calculator. 3.38 divided by 7.25. And I say to myself, self, it looks like I'm going to point for all of you that were saying 65 degrees. No, 62.2 degrees away from the shore. In fact, you know what? Let's do this. All of us right now, let's put a north, east, south, west. So now we can say theta equals, is it 62.2? Yeah. yeah. 62.2 degrees. What of what? North of south, east of west, what of what? The of blank is going to be the horizontal or vertical line. So it's going to be of west. What direction of west? North of west. Let's call that part A. Part B says, hey, what is the resultant vertical velocity? OK. Oh, I can use Pythagoras. Except this time, it's going to be the resultant squared plus the current squared equals the engine squared, because remember, the hypotenuse always has to be by itself. Not what you're trying to find has to be by itself. The hypotenuse has to be by itself. So it's going to be the resultant squared is going to be 7.25 squared. Take away 3.38 squared. Square root your answer. Do you get, uh, f oh, square root your answer, Mr. Do it. Let's go. 41. That's fast. 6.4? 1, 3, 6.4? Meters per second. And I guess for a direction, the resultant will be due north. We, we planned it that way. How fast is he traveling due north? 6.4. What distance is he traveling due north? 256. How long will it take him? I didn't ask this, but uh, let's see. Uh, time is going to be 256 divided by this. Is it faster for him to drift with the current, or is it faster for him to angle his boat and go straight across? It's faster to drift, although then you have to ask how long will it take him to walk back. Usually, it's faster to point yourself into the current and end up straight across because we don't want to have to walk that 130 meters back to where we meant to get. That's if you're heading straight across. Okay. Or if you're an airplane, usually you want to get straight to the city. You'll point your, your jet liner into the wind slightly and let it push you sideways while you go into the wind, if you want that. Uh, handy hint number one. Change in anything is always final minus initial. Change in anything is always final minus initial. Jordan, what's change in anything? By the way, that is, always, that is tough to say. I have to pause. And the number of times I have kids go minus minus, I, it, that happens all the time. It's, it's, it's one of those like saying toy boat a bunch of times fast. It's just tough to say. What's change in anything, Riley? 
Tamara, what's changing anything? You guys laugh, but I'm doing this for a reason. Because in momentum, I'll ask you to find impulse, which is change in momentum. Now, every year kids freeze. No, no, change in momentum. It's going to be the final momentum minus the initial momentum. Later on, I'll ask you to find the change in voltage. Every year kids freeze. No, no, it's the final voltage minus the initial voltage. Later on, I'll ask you to find the change in flux. Kids are going to freeze. No, 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 it's the final flux minus the initial flux. There's going to be many times when I ask you to find a change in something, and I'm not going to tell you how. I'm going to assume, Isaac, anytime you see change in, you're going to say, oh, it's the final thing minus the initial thing. Oh, and if they're vectors, I'm going to add the opposite because I don't subtract vectors. I change it to addition question. If they're in a nice straight line or in the same direction, I'll just ah, subtract them, which they usually will be this year, but not always. So change in velocity, final minus initial, V final minus V initial, change in acceleration, A final minus A initial, change in energy, final amount of energy minus initial amount of energy, change in momentum, also called impulse, final momentum minus initial momentum, change in voltage you're going to do, you're going to do change in flux definitely i'm missing i'm missing about eight of them there's going to be lots of change ins don't panic handy hit number two if they give you a vertical distance you better use a vertical velocity if they give you a horizontal distance you better use a horizontal velocity more vectors these two arrows represent two forces acting on an object Draw a third arrow that would show a force that exactly balances or cancels out the other two. First of all, look at this picture. What don't we like about it? It's not a right triangle. There's something else I don't like about it. Are they tip to tail? Every year I have kids go, oh, that's the result. No, no, no. We have to redraw this or at least reimagine this. I'm going to redraw this since I have room. So I'm going to go, there's my first. Oh, uh, rule of thumb. Anytime you have uh, yucky triangles, always draw the easiest side first, the nastiest side second. Trust me. So there's the easiest side. Nastiest side this way. Yes? Now the resultant would be, don't write this down, that, but this says draw a force that would exactly balance or cancel out the other two. As a vector triangle, what that means is you're going to end up back where you started from. It would be that. If you're going to the right and you're going up and you want to cancel that out, to cancel it out, you're going down and left to cancel out up and right. Okay? We call this canceling out force, and I don't think I used this word last year. Mr. Camozzi might have, though. It begins with letter E. Equili equilibrant. The classic equilibrant vector question is a tug of war where the two teams are canceling each other out exactly. They're each offering an equilibrant to the other force. Turn the page. So you have six vector six vectors here. Vector A, vector B, vector C, vector D, vector E, and vector F. Which of these are resultants? Which of these are equilibrants? Now let's look. Which of these are resultants? Which of these, let's look one vector at a time. Look at vector A. Is vector A what you would get if you added vector C and vector B tip to tail? Let's see. I would go like this. I would go like that. Is vector A what you would get if you added vector B tip to tail? It's not. Because I would draw it that way, right? So vector A is not a resultant. Is vector B a resultant? Is that what I would get? Well, I would go vector A plus vector C. Uh, uh, no, it would be that way, wouldn't it? Is vector C a resultant? 
uh, I would go vector B plus vector A. Uh, you know what? None of these are resultants. Uh, what about here? Are any of these resultants? Is D that? Are these two added tip to tail? I think the only one that I'm seeing as a resultant is F. E can't be because those aren't added tip to tail. Right? D can't be because those aren't added tip to tail. They're meeting tip to tip. But if I added D plus E, the resultant would go jump. Now, which of these are equilibrants? Which of these cancel out the other two vectors? Let's go back. Vector A. Let's see. Oh, you know what? And you know how I know all of them are equilibrants? Because in every one of them, if I follow the arrow, follow the arrow, and follow the arrow, I end up back where I started from. And that's the definition of a vector triangle equilibrant. If I start with vector A, boom, boom, I end up back where I started from. Are any of these equilibrants no, I don't. I run into a tail point, a tip pointing at me. I don't end up back where I started from. No, uh, no you know what? N nothing there. No equilibrance there. A really nasty question would be, hey, which of those are subtraction questions? I think one of these might actually be the answer to a subtract. In fact, I think vector E is vector D minus vector F, but I'd have to muck around with it for a while. I'm not going to ask you that. That's way too tough. What's your homework? Number one, I haven't talked about horizontal components, but here's what we're talking about. It makes a 40 degree angle with the horizontal. It's 78 Newtons. That would be the vertical component. I'll call that Fy. That would be the horizontal component. So number one says, find fx, which I think you can. Uh, it's a right triangle. It's going to be sine or cosine. I think cosine, but I'll let you try that. Number two is good. Three is good. I'm going to skip four. Eight. Uh, you know what? Four is good. Eight is good. Yeah, I signed them all. Shut up. 8 is a little tricky. And then I have some multiple choice questions along the lines of interpreting vector questions. So number 1 is good on part 2. I did attach the answers. Number 2 is good. I did these answers uh, on Labor Day weekend in a hurry in my head. If you find a mistake in my answer key, candy for you. 3 is good. Yeah, I'm assigning everything so far. 4 is good. A lot of this is just drawing the picture, though, not crunching the numbers. Five is good. You'll probably actually finish this in class. It's not too bad. Now, remember that I assigned everything, Jordan. I wasn't sure if I would. I, I, I added a bunch of questions on Labor Day, and I'm still, but based on how long the lesson took. Um, remember the big ultimate kinematics review package that I gave? If you want now to whittle away at it. You don't have to, but you're now capable, you should be capable of doing number one, number two, number four, number six, number 11, number 13, number 15, 17, 19, 20. You can whittle away at those if you want to, but your first goal is uh, get the homework from today done and anything from previous days done.